So where is that thermal? Let's find out. Hey pilot, let's talk about finding a thermal. Uh, in this video we'll do a flyover, a th classic thermal trigger and we'll talk you through what to do, how to find the thermal, where it's likely to be, how to core it and I'll give you some examples of good spots to look for thermals. So let's head to the sky. We're flying at Kardusi in South Africa again. It's a west facing slope and it's early in the day. Okay, so here's a typical gully scenario. We've got a gully in front of us here. And this is an area that I'd be very careful of um, if I was flying later in the day and the wind was coming through from there. You're gonna get the wind rolling and the thermals running up the gullies, which will create a spin. So I would expect dust devil type turbulence in those gullies. If the wind's coming from there, I'd rather be using this face using this whole slope. And there again, be careful of getting behind something like this, where the wind might be coming along and then spilling down. It's a little bit rough in here, even in the morning. And that's because there are some exposed rocks that are heating up, but the, most of the terrain is green vegetation. So you're getting these little superheated pockets so in this situation, this is early in the morning, I've got this big bowl and it's not working. I would expect that farm to work. There's a spike there, but it's really not enough to work. So I'm just gonna fly out and I'm gonna trust my ability to find something and core it over this farm. There's a nice big area of fields that would be warming. It's been in the sun all morning. Um, you've got the trigger points, I would say the trees. You've got a dam which is providing some moisture for the air. It's also cooling that air on that side. So I'm looking for going straight over the trees and picking up something that's come off the farm roof. I would expect it to drift towards the mountain slightly. So I'm probably picking something up already. Never pass up an opportunity to just turn in lift if there is some lift. That's zero on this side, but there's a bit of lift there and I can feel it pulling me into the thermal. So it's worth going round. And now I'm just trying to make a circle that keeps me in lift all the way. Feels like that's the edge of the thermal there. And there's a nice bit of core there. And it's a little bit weak on this side, but that's okay because I've got that good core coming up. Three, two, one. That little piece. So I'm gonna try and center on that and climb out again. Whoop, there we go. It's a little bit of a spike, so I think it's right on the edge of the thermal. So I don't mind if I don't center on that as long as I'm going through it because here I'm feeling I'm already going out of the thermal. There's a bit of lift there. I'm extending this side just to see. Better lift, that was a good move. Keep the turn on and try and recenter on this new piece. So that's typical in the morning. You have to do lots of recentering as the, sh the core changes and moves because it doesn't have such a big heat reservoir and it's not such a big thermal so it tends to wriggle more so you have to wriggle wriggle and wiggle find a way through so because I found the thermal here just on the transition I'm gonna stay out away from the ridge now and just work this band 
where I think I've got a better chance of staying up. Groovy! Heading out into the valley so early in the day is quite committing. Once you're out over the road, you've got maybe three minutes before you're going to be landing on the ground and have to walk up again. So you really have to be flying to a thermal. You can't afford to miss anything. So I'm moving out to this other farm. And I often do this with two trigger points so that when one uh, stops working, you hop over to the other one. It gives the first one time to regenerate and uh, it gives you another opportunity to look for lift. And the second one's at a high point in the ground. All right, thermal trigger revision. Here's another farm. I'm using this as my trigger point. You can see my shadow just entering the farm now. There's very little wind, so I'm going to go straight over the silver roof with the trees around it, hoping that this back line of trees is going to trigger. There's a car that's just gone through the yard. That might help. And somewhere around here, we should find something. So my first turn, I'm just keeping it very steady. I've got zero on this side, slightly better there. So I'm shifting slightly that way. Now I'm tightening up. That's a two. I'm weaker on this side. So I need to extend my turn a bit. I don't want to be here. I want to be there. One, two, three, and now turn. Let's hope that's around the core. So now I'm keeping it reasonably tight. I can feel it's going slack there. I'm out of the thermal again and I need to extend again. So one, two, three, round, and now turn. Now I'm out this side. It's a bit wobbly on that side. So I want to extend upwind, which is this way. One, two, three, whoa! All right, that's right out the front of the thermal there. So we're going to swing around and go back for it. I'm sinking, sinking, sinking. And it must be over here somewhere. So one, two, three. Let's change direction just for fun. So it's quite tight. I'm getting a spike of lift and then nothing. So somewhere here, I want to go around. So I'm putting on quite a bit of brake on the inside. Just enough to keep the turn tight. And I'm timing my weight shift. So I'm reserving a bit of weight shift input so that I can bank it up when I feel that the right moment has come. Uh, that's all sinky, sinky. So there's lift there. I'm straightening up in it. It's lift, it's choppy, it's broken. I feel I'm going to lose the thermal if I carry on that way. So I'm going to widen and explore. I'm exploring this side. I'm going straight a bit, exploring. Uh, nothing really usable, so continue the turn, exploring. So I'm bracketing my thermal area. I lost it. So I'm doing a wider searching turn around to find the thermal and I seem to have lost it. But now what I can do is go back to my thermal source and I can see from where I started what the wind direction is. I've drifted with the wind coming from there. So that tells me that I should be over this side to pick up the best thermal off the farmhouse because it'll drift down to somewhere here-ish. There it is. Let's try and center on that.
Hope that helps you identify and catch a thermal from a good ground source. Remember to make a decision and just follow through on it so that you can learn whether your decisions are good or bad. Cool, I hope that helps you identify where a thermal is, give you some uh, principles to follow when you're next looking for a thermal. Um, they're tricky things, you know, they'll, they'll move and shift. So they'll be somewhere near that trigger point. Good luck finding them and searching them out. And uh, try and remember the pattern from the day when you see a, a thermal trigger and where you hit the thermal and use that line to just repeat on all the other thermal triggers through the day. And that's a good way of getting a high hit rate. Hope that keeps you high. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our patrons. Thanks to our supporters. Check out the shop. Check out our YouTube channel, subscribe, and I will see you next time.